Good morning. We, uh, we finished last time, Sugi 1.4, and we concluded that if a person misses a tefillah, he can make it up the next tefillah, right? Even if you're going from one day to the next, right? Even if you miss Mincha and you're going to Mariv, so technically you're missing, you're skipping a day, or I shouldn't say skipping a day, you should say you're going into the next day, you're making up on the next day what you missed the previous day, still, it's okay. But all of that is with one caveat, and that is that it has to be that you are missing it accidentally, right? But if you missed it intentionally, you were fully aware of the fact that you missed it, uh, that you were missing it and you decided that you had other things to do which were more important to you. Last week we used the example of uh, the Super Bowl, where you decided that it was more important to watch the Super Bowl than to Davin Mincha. So, which I understand the Yates are horror for, but meanwhile, you, that is amazing. <laughs> That's considered intentional, and you cannot make it up by davening to Mars. Now, if you got so engrossed in the game, you forgot to daven Mincha, that's a different story. But if you knew about Mincha, and you remembered Mincha, but you decided against it, that was, uh, that's intentional, and that you're not allowed to do. Now, our Gemara is going to be discussing this upcoming Gemara, and that actually, which you just turned the page, Chavavah and the base. Well, our Gemara is going to be discussing the following thing. There's an interesting offshoot discussion, which somebody raised the other day. What happens if you're going from one, not only from one day to another, but actually from one prayer to another? You know what I mean by that is, let's say, for example, that you miss Mincha on the of Shabbos. So it's Friday afternoon, it's busy, you know, people miss Mincha sometimes, okay? Okay, you ran out of time, or whatever it is, you just never got there and you forgot Mincha. All right? Well, now it's Friday night, and you're about to daven Mariv, and then you realize, hey, I forgot to daven Mincha. Can you daven two Marivs now? Well, we just finished saying, yeah. But you see, but over here is a little different, because it's not the same Shemun Esrei. Right? Everybody knows that the weekday Shemun Esrei is quite different than the Shabbos Shemun Esrei. So, hmm, can I make up the weekday Mincha by davening a second Shabbos Mariv Shemun Esrei? Okay, right, okay. So the, the, once you get into this kind of scenario, you can talk about lots of different possibilities, you know. Uh, Tosis is a big Tosis that discusses what happens if you forgot Mincha on Rosh Chodesh. And you were supposed to say, well, even if you dab in Mincha on Rosh Chodesh, right? But you forgot to say, Yala V'yavo. And now, can you make it up by two Maravs, but Marav is already not Rosh Chodesh anymore. So can you make it up? <laughs> Right, so this is, uh, or the opposite, right? Can you make up a missed error of Rosh Chodesh with davening two Rosh Chodeshes? This is the same kind of idea, same question. Same kind of idea, it's not necessarily exactly the same, but it's the same idea. You're davening something different than you missed. So is that a makeup? Can you do that? Is that, is that good, not good? How, how do you deal with that one, right? That's a new new wrench thrown into the works here. That, that, that's the, that's going to be the question. So take a look at the Gemara. And um, you want to just go through it or you want to uh, go through it together? Or you want to uh, try to work it out? Let's go through it together. Okay, let's go. Okay. Everybody with me? Tanu Rabbanan. What does Tanu Rabbanan mean? The rabbis taught. Now, let me, let me explain that for a moment, what the rabbis taught. Now, that is a brysa. Now, in case anybody wants to know what is a brysa, a lot of people don't know what a brysa is. 
what is a brysa, okay? So I will briefly describe to you what a brysa is. A brysa is as follows. There was a wealth of oral teaching that went on during the times of the Tanoim, which are the architects of the Mishnah. A wealth, and they were handed down orally, because at that point there was no such thing as a text for the oral law. There were hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of different people who had mesoras, had traditions from their rabbeim and da 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 da. When Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbi Yehuda the Prince, decided that the Roman exile was getting worse and worse, and he saw the necessity to write down the first text of the oral law, which was known as Mishnah, he gathered together most, if not all, of the sages of Israel, and he ironed out with all of them what was the right Mesorah, exactly what was the, you know, what's everything is, what needs to be put together. And he collated something called the Mishnah. Well, it took about 30 years to accomplish, but the Mishnah was completed, all six Siddharim of the Mishnah was finally completed in the year 188. Now, what happened to all the wealth of information that was not incorporated in the Mishnah? The Mishnah was intended to be memorized, believe it or not. Now, that, there aren't that many people who have memorized Mishnah, but there are some people who are memorized Mishnah. I'll uh, digress for a second. I will tell you that I remember when I had the honor of, in, towards the end of his life, Rabbi Ruderman, the uh, Rosh Hashiva here in Nair Israel. So uh, when, when I was, uh, I had the honor of taking him around, the doctor told him they had to walk. So uh, it was hard for him to walk, he had bad legs. So, but the family, you know, wanted him to walk, so he, they got a rotation of boys to come and, and, and walk with him. So I was on that rotation. So I noted that after every time that I asked him something and he answered me, uh, he started mumbling to himself. And at first I took to it with, with I, I, like, the, 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 it was somewhat odd that he just started mumbling to himself. And I actually mentioned it to one of the family members. I said, ah, you know, I think the she was starting to lose it. So he said, why do you say? So I described what he was saying. He laughed at me. He says, oh my gosh, I see you do not know Rabbi Ruderman very well. He said, he's been doing that for 50 years. You know what he's mumbling? Mishnayas. He has committed all of Mishnayas to memory. He knows Shisha Sidre Mishnah by heart. It takes a pretty solid memory to do that. And he, every time that there is a lull in conversation, he will automatically just pick up from where he left off and he's consistently reviewing all Shisha Sidra Mishnah. I like that. Okay? That's pretty, pretty awesome. Now, there aren't that many people who like that, unfortunately, perhaps, but there aren't that many. So those, that's Mishnah. Mishnah was the text of the oral law and became the basis for the Talmud and everything. But what happened to all those other uh, Mishnaic laws and Mishnaic uh, traditions that went along and that were used when Rabbi Yehuda Nasi was creating the Mishnah? What happened to all that? So it went into different side things known as Brysa. Literally, Brysa is an Aramaic word that means outside. It means outside the Mishnah. These were Mishnaic rulings that were outside of the text that was accepted as the Mishnah.
but they are very authoritative. Many of them, uh, you know, were studied separately. And the Gemara quotes Bryce's left, right, and center. Right? That's what Bryce's are. There are actually different types of Bryce's. There are some Bryce's that were written, you know, that were, uh, that were along the order of the Mishnah. There were Bryce's that were on the Chumash. There are Bryce's more like Midrashim. There are all sorts of different Bryce's. They're all now written down. You can get them. There's uh, Torah's Kohanim for Vayikra, and there's Mechilta and Sifra and Sifri. All of those are Bryce's. The Gemara actually uses different words for different Bryce's. There's Tanya, there's Tanu Rabbanon, you know, various other you know, things like that. But if you really want to be specific, there's a Sefer that was written, it's, it's printed at the end of most Gemaras, and any of the Gemaras, it's called, um, it was written by Rav Shmuel Hanagid, in case uh, that rings a bell to anyone. Rav Shmuel Hanagid was, uh, was one of the great, great uh, leaders of the Jewish people in, uh, in Spain, Spanish Spain. Um, he, was, uh, he was a vizier, he became uh, like... Uh, the second to the king, like Yosef was. He was an amazing, amazing person. He wrote something called the Derech HaTalmud. I think that's what it's called. Derech HaTalmud. And in there he goes to explain all these little details about when is it Tanya and when is it Tan Rabbana and this and that. For our purposes, we can just call them, call them Brises. So you'll find Brises. The Gemara uses Brises all the time, Right? Um, they're not quite as authoritative as a Mishnah, but almost. Okay, with that little uh, intro there, now you know what a Brisa is. Now let's get to the Brisa that the Gemara talks about. Tana Rabbana. So our rabbi is taught in a Brisa. Okay, help me out here. Ta made a mistake. The Lois Palo Mincha Be'erev Shabbos. Okay, he didn't daven mincha on Friday. Okay, so it's Friday afternoon. He made a mistake. He got very involved, right? You can understand that, right? Getting very involved on an Arab Shabbos. It's busy Arab Shabbos, this and that and the other thing. And uh, he forgot to daven mincha. Okay. Not an unbelievable scenario. Next. So what happens? So the Brisa is now posing... You know, he doesn't ask it in the question form, but obviously the question is going to be, so what do you do now? Mispalel Belel Shabbos Shtaim. Says the Brisa, you daven on Friday night twice. Aha! Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So the Brisa says very clearly, black and white in fact, right? Says it right out. That if you miss Mincha on Erev Shabbos, even though that's a weekday Shemona Esrei, you can make up that weekday Shemona Esrei by davening to Shabbos, Marivs. Okay? That gives you an idea of what makeup is. Parenthetically, you see that makeup to davening is not getting a second chance to ask for the various needs you had, which you missed in the last prayer, so now I'm going to make it up this time. That's not what that is. Because on Friday afternoon, you missed a regular weekday Shemona Esrei with 19 brachas and all of the requests. And now you're making it up on Friday night with a Shabbos Shemona Esrei, which has no requests. And it's only seven brachas, an entirely different layout for Shemona Esrei. So you see that the point isn't that I'm going to just do it later, do the same thing later, but rather the main point is I am approaching God in prayer. That's what makeup is. So even though it's a totally different prayer, it makes no difference. The thing that they do have in common is I'm approaching God in prayer. I am connecting with my creator. And that they have in common, and it doesn't really make any difference, says the Brisa, whether it's a different Shemona Esrei or not. I'm approaching my creator, I'm going to talk to him, and that's the main point.
So, can you make it up from Erev Shabbos into Shabbos? The answer is yes. That's what the Bryce says. Good. Okay, let's go on. So that's the first ruling of the Brisa. Next ruling. Ta, again, that means he made a mistake. Of course, every time that you're talking about, based on the previous Gemara, every time that you're talking about a makeup Shimon Esrei, it has to be a ta case. It has to be a case where you erred and made a mistake, because if you knew... You can't make it up, right? That was the Gemara. Yes, that was in the previous Sugi. Okay. Ta, he made a mistake. Velo yispalu mincha b'Shabbos. And he did not daven mincha on Shabbos. Oh, okay. He had a little too much cholent. And he schluffed through, especially in the winter, right? And uh, he schluffed through a little too much in the afternoon nap. And uh, by the time he woke up, it was already um, too late for Mincha. He missed, he missed Mincha. So what do you do now? Answer? He davens on Motsai Shabbos to Shel Chol of the weekday. Ah, okay. Again. The fact that you're, da- you're davening an entirely different Shemot Esrei does not make any difference. Right? You're davening, you're davening two Shemot Esrei's of that prayer. Right? Don't think that makeup means I'll daven the prayer that's at hand and then I'll daven the prayer that I missed. No. You're davening two of the prayers at hand. Whatever they be. Okay? Now, here's an interesting little tidbit. Again, another little question. Okay? Let's say Shabbos. Everybody knows we add in a little paragraph called Atachon Antonu in Atachon Leodam Das, which is what's known in the Gemara as the Lashon of Havdola. Right? In the Gemara's terminology, there are two Havdolas we make on Motsai Shabbos. There's a Havdola in prayer, which is the Atachon Antonu, which we insert into the Shemona Esrei, right, in that first bracha of Avchon and Adas. And then there's the more formal Havdola, which we do with the fire and uh, with a cup of wine, and usually that's done at home when we get home, right? Now, so here, here, here's an interesting question. So we just said, you miss Mincha on Shabbos, you make it up by tomorrow's Matzai Shabbos. Right? Okay, now what about Havdoah? What about the additional paragraph of Atachon Antanu in prayer? In prayer. So where do you put that? Or do you put it? Do you say it twice? You gotta say it once at least for sure, right? You're saying, right? but do you say it twice? In which one do you say it? So, says the Brisa, this is all part of that same Brisa, says the Brisa, Mavdil Barishona. What does that mean? You say Mavdil is a verb, right? Mavdil, he separates, which means he says Avdoah, Barishona in the first one, the ain't no mavdil bishnia, but he does not make avdola in the second one. Okay, so what is the Brisa rule? The Brisa rules as follows. You make avdola in the first Shemona Esrei, and you don't make avdola in the second Shemona Esrei. That's what the Brisa rules. Now, Rashi speaks it out. We're not going to do the Rashi together, but Rashi says... Oh, you know why that is? I'll tell you why that is. Because the first Shemona Esrei is for the Shemona Esrei at hand. The second, that's your makeup. Okay? You may have thought the contrary. You may have thought that, oh, but first let me make up what I missed and then I'll dive in that. No, no, no. No, no, no. The rule goes, says Rashi, based on this Brisa. The rule is, the first Shemona Esrei that you're davening is the Shemona Esrei at hand. If you're making up a Mismincha and you're davening two Mariv's, the first is Mariv. 
is for the Shemona Esrei, that's right now, Marev. The second one is your makeup. And so on with all this. It's all, they're all the same that way, right? The second one is the makeup, not the first one. So therefore, says Rashi, that's the reason for the b'risa. That's the reason why the b'risa rules. You make, a, make Abdullah in the first Shemona Esrei, yeah. But you don't make Abdullah in the second one. Why? Simple. Because the first Shemona Esrei you, was the Mariv. That's where, that's where Abdullah belongs. And the second one, well, what do you, you were already mavdil. I mean, how many, how many separations can you make from Shabbos to Yantav? I mean, it, it was already done, it's already done. I mean, you know, if Shabbos is over, Shabbos is over, right? You don't have to take Shabbos out again 10 minutes after you took it out already, right? I mean, it's, it's done, so, so you're finished. So therefore, the first Shemun Esrei gets the Hatachan Antano, and the second Shemun Esrei does not. Says the Brisa, Vim Hivdil Bishnia, the low Hivdil Barishona. Help me out, what does that mean? In the second one, and not in the. Okay, so now this guy didn't get it right. Okay, this guy thought, okay, I can understand where he was coming from, even though he, he was wrong. But this guy thinks, ah, oh, I know what it is. I'm making up the mist mincha first, and then I'm davening marav, right? Therefore, the first Shemona Esrei, he davened, he did not say atachanantano, because he thought that that was the makeup. And the second one he did. So says the Brisa, and what happens if you did that? Again, the imhivdil bishnia. If he made a havdola in the first, in the second one, the low imhivdil barishona, and he did not make a havdola in the first one, what happens now? So you figure, okay, he made a mistake, okay, but you know it works. Ah, uh-uh. says the brisa, get a load of this. Shnia also, the second one also means it go, goes up for him. Which means, in other words, it works. The f- second Shemona Esrei, good, you got it. That worked. Rishona lo Olsolo, the first Shemona Esrei did not work for him. And as Rashi says, this poor chap is going to have to dive in a third Shemona Esrei. <laughs> right? Okay? Now, let's think about that for a minute. Again, he missed Mincha on Shabbos. He's now Motzai Shabbos. So the Brisa rules, this is the way you're supposed to do it. Tzavin to Marivs, Motzai Shabbos, correct, right? And again, it makes no difference the fact that it's a different Shemona Esrei, that's fine, right? Good. What about Havdalah? So the Brisa ruled very clearly. The Brisa says, the first Shemona Esrei is your Mariv. Therefore, that's the one that gets out to Hanantano. Second one, you already took out Shabbos. You don't have to do it anymore. Second one, you can just skip the Atta Hanantano and do a regular weekday Marav Shmanasri. Right? Fine. And what happens if you inverted the order? What happens if you did it the opposite? Says the Brisa, surprising ruling. You don't say, well, okay, you messed up a little bit. Okay, big deal. Okay. After all, he did do Shemur Ezra's, right? No. Says the Brisa, he blew it. Because he missed Atachan Antanu in the first one, which he should have said it, he missed, that's no good, Rishon Olo also low, the first one didn't work, only the second one worked, and now he has to yet make up a third one. Whoa. Woo. Okay. That's interesting. Stop. Pause. Let's get up on our thinking caps here. Um, why was that? Why is it that the first Shemona Esrei didn't count? 
only the second one counted. And now he has to do a third. Now, why is that? Okay, okay, uh, okay. So, uh, so Ellie suggests, well, without uh, Havdalah, you're basically davening a mincha. Okay, I'm going to elaborate upon that and come back to what you said. There are two possible reasons here. Ellie said one of them and I'm going to elaborate upon what you said in a minute. There are two possible reasons why the first Shemar Nasser didn't work. Now, of course, the Brysa just told you what it is, right? The Brysa did not tell you why it was. It only told you that it is, okay? Um, that you have to use the old noodle for. Sometimes the Gemara helps you out, okay? Okay. Now, there are two possibilities here. Possibility one is, oh, because if you miss Atachon on on a f- Saturday night, you blew Shemun It was one of those inserts that had to be said. It's like, let's say it's in the middle of the winter and you miss Mashiach Baruch Merdeh That's it, you blew it. You got to go back and you got to say Shemun right? It's in the middle of the winter, and you miss, you said the same bracha instead of the same talam mater. No good. You got to go back, right? So the Gemara, at first glance, says, oh, oh, so maybe atachon antanu is the same way. That if you miss an atachon antanu, that's also like, as I call it, a fatal error, right? Computer doc, right? A fatal error in your um, in your program and that's it you sh- you shut down <laughs> and and you blew it and now you got to uh, start your shmona Esrei all over again because you missed an, a, an important point that was had to be there so that's possibility one possibility one again is that atachon antanu is like those inserts that had to happen and if you missed it on motzai shabbos you blew it and you have to repeat the Shemun Esrei. That would be one possible explanation as to why it is that if you didn't say Atta Chanantana, the first one, that's no good. And you only, the only Shemun Esrei that worked was the second Shemun Esrei in which you did do it. That's one possibility. That was the, that, as you'll see in the Gemara, that was the Gemara's original assumption. That that is the reason. Right? But the Gemara is going to say, huh? That's not true. If you miss Atachon Antanu, you do not have to repeat Shemona Esrei, my friend. Right? Because you can rely on the Havdalah that you're going to do more formally at home. Right? With the, with the cup of wine and with the Havdalah candle, etc. You don't have to repeat Shemona Esrei for that. So the Gemara is like saying, What? Why would you have to repeat Shemona Esri? Because you missed Havdalah. That's not a reason. That's, that's not one of the inserts that would obligate you to repeat Shemona Esri. So what's going on here? Okay, so the Gemara is going to be discussing that. So the Gemara, the Gemara is, well, okay, we'll see. But Ellie suggested, which I'm going to, uh, with your permission, interpret your holy words. That's what that means, right? Ellie's also, like he says, just to, like the Gemara. He just says a couple words and you have to understand what he means. Um, so I'm going to explain what you meant. What you are think, well, I think you meant, was, oh, there might be a totally different reason here. The totally different reason is because it had nothing to do with the fact that you missed Havdola per se. It was because that his missing Havdalah in the first Shemona Esrei gave us a window into his mind 
and showed that he was thinking that the first Shemona Esrei on Matzai Shabbos was the makeup. And the second one was the one at hand. And that's why he blew it. Because that's not the right order. The correct order is that the first one is the one at hand and only the second one is the makeup. So that's what you meant to say. Is that, did, I, did I get you right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I was thinking his mind wasn't there. Okay. Which is true. His mind, wasn't there. His mind, his mind he had, he had right, not mindful, meaning not that he forgot Atachon Antonu. That's not the big thing. Yeah, he forgot Atachon Antonu. It's true, he did, right? But that, because you forgot Atachon Antonu, would not have made a big difference because on a regular Motsu Shabbos, if you miss Atachon Antonu, let's assume that you didn't miss Milk either, right? And you miss Atachon Antonu, which happens, I'm sure, frequently, it's no big deal. You don't have to repeat Shemones, right? It seems if they missed it in both, uh, okay, okay, so the, we're going to talk about that, okay? So, but Eli is suggesting that the reason over here why that Tanu is it plays a bigger role is because that that's a window into his mind that he's thinking that the first Shemona Esrei was the makeup and it's only the second Shemona Esrei which is the one at hand and that's a blooper and maybe that's the reason that, you have to, that the price of rules they have to repeat. Okay, let's see. Okay, I I I, I cheated a little bit. It's 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 okay to cheat in this case, you know. Like I tell my guys, you know, if you read the Gemara a little ahead and you see some of the Nefarshim a little ahead, okay, so you're cheating. It's okay. It's all right. You'll you, you, cheating in this case. It's it, it, it's okay. You could we'll, we'll allow you to cheat in this case. <laughs> okay, so let's see the Gemara. The Gemara says, I'm up to Lememra. Does everybody have me? Lememra. It is, uh, I'm not sure in your uh, format of Gemara, but whatever it is. It's, uh, everybody have me? Lememra. Yeah, yeah. So we're finished with the Brysa. And Lememra means, is that to say, the, I can just see the Amoraim in the, in the base Medrash back in Bavel, they're mulling over this brysa. And you got this Amora with this big beard, and he's like stroking his beard, and he's thinking, hmm, this brysa, he says two Shmonas rays, he didn't say Atochan in the first one, he said it in the second one, he blew it and he has to repeat it to a third time. Hmm, let me think about that one, just a minute here, right? Lememra, is that to say? The kivon that sins, the lo avdil bekamaisa. Help me out, what does that mean? That since he, good, since he did not do the separation, meaning he did not say, bekamaisa in the first one. That's the same root word as kama, as in bava kama, right? Ka Maisa, Baba Kama means the first gate. Kama says that since he didn't make Havdalah in the first one, Kiman, it's like, it's like one Delo Tzali Dami. It's as if that it's, he's like one who did not Davin, it is similar to. In Hebrew, we, in English, we would say it is similar to someone who didn't daven. But in Hebrew, sometimes it's uh, the, this would be like an adverb. The adverb is at the end, right? So therefore, he is, demand lo tzali, it's like one who didn't daven, dummy he is similar to. Which means he's similar to one who didn't daven. That is to say that Havdallah is a insert which has to be said and if he didn't it's a fatal error and he has to repeat and we make him repeat Shemona Esrei for that lack is that what that means the Gemara is clearly thinking that that's the reason why his first Shemona Esrei did not work 
his first Shemun Esrei did not work because, oh, well, apparently the Brisa must hold that missing Atachon Antanu is a fatal error. It's like missing the same bracha or missing Yala Yava or something like that. And it's a fatal error. And uh, you have to repeat Shemun Esrei. So the Gemara says, Lememra, is that to say that that's the case? Hmm. Is that true, eh? The Gemara is like saying, it, you can hear the Gemara setting you up for this kasha. It's like I told one of my Talmudim, Lememra is like, okay, guy says, okay, move your face right over here so I can wham it. Right? Right? <laughs> right? So the Gemara says, what are you talking about? That is simply not true. Or a man who, that should sound familiar. A challenge, an attack. Uh, an attack, and it's a contradiction. Right? Or a man I'm going to give you a contradiction. A contradiction by a different Brysa. The Brysa says, Ta. If a person made an error, and he didn't mention Givuros Gishamim. That means literally the strength of the reins, but that's the way the Gemara refers to the strength of the reins. Because it talks about God's strength and control over the weather. So if a person made a mistake and he did not mention Givuros Gishamim, he did not mention the strength of the reins, he did not mention Bitchias Hamesim. If he didn't mention that in the bracha of Trias Hamesim, of course, that's where we insert it, right? And in the winter, we put in Masha Baruch Hashem. What happens if a person mistakenly forgot to put that in? Or the Sheila, or asking the Birchas Hashanim in the blessings of the year. That's referring to the same Talumotor where we ask Hashem to please give rain as we need it because that's in Eretz Yisrael. The rainy season, the planting, growing season is over what we would know as the winter, right? And it's essential that in Eretz Yisrael they get rain at that time. So you are asking for rain, right? That's the Sheila. Asking, asking for rain. The same Talumotor the blessing of the years, which is Baruch Aleinu, right? Baruch Hashem, Baruch Hashanim. So if a person made a mistake in either of those two things, he either forgot to say, or he forgot to say, in Baruch Hashanim, in either of those cases, rules the Brisa, we'll call this Brisa number two. Brisa number two rules in either of those cases, Machzir Noso. What does Machzir and Oso mean? You would make him repeat. repeat. That is a fatal error. Either of those is a fatal error. And boom, you missed Shemona Esrei. Sorry, back to the dugout. You've got to go back and now do another Shemona Esrei because you blew your Shemona Esrei. That was a fatal error. However, Havdola Bechonen Hadas. But if he made a mistake and he forgot Havdola in Chonin Hadar Saturday night, he was, you know, he just ran through Shmon Esra a little too fast and he forgot to add in Atta Chonantanu on Motsai Shabbos. Ain't Mansir Noso. You don't make him go back. Mipnei, because. Shayachola Omra al Hakos. Because he could say it over a coast of wine, right? In other words, put in simple English. If he missed it on the Shmanasri, it's no big deal because he can go home and make the more formal Havdalah service over the cup of wine and the you know and the Basamim and the and the Havdalah candle. <coughs> so he's covered, it's no big deal. So the Gemara says, well, hello? Brysa number two says explicitly, black and white, that if you miss Havdalah in Shemona Esrei, it's no big deal. It is not a fatal error. So the Gemara 
says. So why did Brysa number one say, again, if you missed Mincha, and now you're davening two Marifs, and you went and you daven the Marif, but you forgot to say Yala Viyavo in the, not Yala Viyavo, I'm sorry, Atachon Antonu in the first one. You did not say it in the first one, and you did say it in the second one. The first one is nothing. And you have to say it a third time. The second one worked, but the first one did not. Now you have to say it a third time. But why? Why should you have to do that? Because you missed that the Chanantano? That's the reason? That's not a reason. We just proved from the second Brisa that it's not true. That you're missing at the Chanantano is not a fatal error. So, if, so, so what if you missed it at the Chanantano? So big deal. That's not a reason to miss Shimon Ezra. That's not a reason to, to, to negate your Shimon Ezra, your first Shimon Ezra, right? So the Gemara says, I don't understand you. Why is the first Shimon Ezra not good? Why? The Bryces did rule that, right? The Bryces said that very explicitly. So why is that? I don't understand. That's not a fatal error. So the Gemara does something which the Gemara does not like to do. And the Gemara says, Kasha. Question mark. Just leaves it as a question. And that's the conclusion. Question. Got a good question. I don't know. I don't know. That's... That's the Gemara. That's it. You're finished. We're done. So, of course, that's not very satisfying because at the end of the Gemara, you're like, like sitting there left in a lurch. Like, uh, so what is the right to have shot? Okay, I don't know. What's the, the Gemara left me hanging, right? The, did we just disprove Bryson number one? Did we just show that it's wrong? Okay. Oh, well, okay. A Bryce, uh, we have to understand too. Is this reason why it's a Bryson on a Mishnah? You're saying because it could be uh, erroneous? Yeah. There is such a thing as an erroneous brysa. The Gemara in, in several places in, in the Talmud says that there was a school of two great sages, two great Talmudim of Rabbi Yudha Nasi. They were Rabbi Chia and Rabbi Oshia. Oshia, 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 however you pronounce that word, that name. And they studied all the brysas. And they made a big study of the, all the Bryces that did not get incorporated in the Mishnah. And the Gemara says, if it was learned and it passed muster in the yeshiva of Rabchi and Rabbeishia, it's a good Brysa, you can rely on it. And, you know, if the Brysa says so, you better deal with it, right? And it's authoritative. If the Brysa did not go through the academy of, uh, of Rabchi and Rabbeishia, who studied all of those, if we know that that was not necessarily learned there, or it was not accepted there, so then uh, they made an exhaustive study of all the Bryces, and if, if it didn't pass muster over there, maybe it was mistaken. Okay? But by and large, we assume that the Bryces are authoritative. So now what? Now we're stuck. We're in a lurch, right? We don't know what to do. Is the Bryce wrong? The Bryce right? What do we do? So as far as the Talmud is concerned, we don't have an answer to this question. The Bryce, the Gemara says, Kasha. Okay? Well. Okay, you guys are holding your seatbelts? Okay? The Rajba and the Rush, two of the great Rishonim, 
let me just define that. The Rishonim were the medieval commentators. The likes of Rashi, Tosus. To, uh, there were many great Rishonim. This was in, if you're a little bit of a history uh, guy, you might know that there was such a thing as the golden era of Spanish Jewry. The golden era of Spanish Jewry was from approximately the year 1000. It actually started with Rib Shmuel Hanagid that we, we mentioned. And it went until 1492 when our, uh, our good friends um, uh, Ferdinand and Isabella decided that, the, that Spain would be better off with no Jews in it. And they ruined their country forever. But that's beside, okay, we, we, we won't get into the historical note of that. But during the golden era, there were many great, great Rishonim, great scholars that made their mark on the history of Talmudic learning. One of whom was the Rashba, Rabbeinu Shlomo Ben Ideris. It was the Rav of, I think it was Casablanca. I'm not positive that's true. Right? And he was the Godel Hador in in, uh, he lived in about the 1200s. He was the Godel Ador after the Ramban, Nachmanides. So, okay, he lived right after the Ramban, and he was the Godel Ador, who was considered the greatest of his generation. The Rashba and the Rosh. The Rosh was Rabbeinu Osher, who lived in Europe originally. He lived in, in Germany, and he eventually emigrated to Spain. That's a different story. He had to flee for his life. That's a, that's a different story, which we want to get into that right now. The Rosh and the Rosh, but both quote Rav Haigon. Okay, there's another term that we'll just mention. What is Rav Haigon? Who was Rav Haigon? Rav Haigon was the last of the great Geonim. Now, okay, that's a different term. That means that after the closing of the Talmud, the Talmud Bavli was finished in the year 500. After the closing of the Talmud, there was a brief period in between, which we're not going to get into, and then there was the era of the Gaonim. Gaonim means that these were the Rosh Yeshivas in the very same buildings as they made the Talmud in. The very same buildings, Pompadisa and Sura and Narda and you know these great cities that were famous from the Talmud time, these were the Rosh Hashivas after them. And their title was Gon. That was a title. They were the Rosh Hashivas. The title was Gon. There's, there's a whole story about how you could become a Gon. Which means Gon. Which Gon means great. Right? Right? That's what it, that's what it, it means. Uh, but uh, to, to earn that title, you had to be pretty, pretty amazing. Okay? The last, and perhaps the most famous of all the Gonim, there were a few famous Gonim. There, there, you've heard of Rav Sadja Gon. He was pretty famous. Right? Rav Shreira Gon, Rav Sadja Gon, Rav Yeridoy Gon. Some, some of these Gonim achieved tremendous uh, fame because the whole world looked to them. They were the, the, they were the God of Lador. The last of the great Gaonim was Rav Haigon. And Rav Haigon was the Gadol Hador in like the late 900s. And the, he helped create the diaspora. Because as the Jewish community was breaking off, Excuse me, and there were communities popping up in Europe, in Western Europe, in Central Europe, in North Africa, right? They looked to Rav Haigon for guidance, and there is ex extensive, uh, extensive uh, correspondence that we have in print that uh, Rav Haigon wrote to these to these people, you know, telling them how to do, what to do, and. And this is, uh, this is how you should go about. And he helped get Rabbanim for them. And, you know, he was, he was an amazing man. So at any rate, so Rav Haigon 
is quoted both by the Rashba and the Rush. He says, whenever the Gemara in the Talmud Bavli says the word kasha, look here, right? Kasha. It means it's a good question. But it is not, says Rav Hagon, it is not a refutation. The Gemara did not want to bother answering this question. It was a good question. But says Rav Haigon, it does not mean that it is refuted and there is an answer. Now, see, if Englander would say that, right, you would have said, Englander, like how do you know that? And that would be a reasonable question, like how would I know that, right? <laughs> But you see, Rav Haigon had a Mesorah because he taught in the very same building that the great Tanoim and Amoroim, well, not Tanoim, Amoroim taught themselves. He had a direct Mesorah. The later Rishonim said, you don't fight, you don't start up with one of the Gaonim. Because even when they say something that does not seem to work out from the Talmud, these people had it a straight Mesorah from the, from, from the Talmudic era, right? They lived in the same building. They came right after them. They had a direct Mesorah. And I remember uh, reading one time Rabbeinu Tam. Rabbeinu Tam, he says, you know, the Gemara doesn't seem to say like this. One of the Gaonim says such and such. He says, it doesn't make sense to me. I, the Gemara doesn't seem to say like that. It says, but quite frankly, I'm afraid to start up with them. Right? <laughs> because, you know, they were the Gonim, and they had a direct Masorah from the, from the Talmud era. You know, if, if, if the Gemara doesn't seem to say like the Gonim, I better think twice, because, you know, they were the Gonim, right? They had a pretty direct, you know, more direct than I do. So they were, the, 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 the later commentaries called the Rishonim, were afraid to start up with the, with the Gonim. But meanwhile, they both quote Rav Haigon and saying that when the Gemara comes out with Kasha, it does not mean a refutation. It means there is an answer, but for some reason the Gemara decides not to bother with the answer. Okay. That's in many places it says Kasha. And that's Rav Haigon's Mesorah. So says the Rashba and the Rush, who lived in two different places. The Rush lived in Central Europe. The Rashba lived, like I said, in Spain. And they lived uh, not too far apart time-wise. They probably overlapped time-wise. I don't know, you know. Okay. Maybe the Rush was a little younger than the Rashba. But okay, but whatever it was, they both said the same thing. And they both answered like Ellie. And they said, I know the answer. I know what, why the Gemara did not refute Bryce number one, but there is an answer. I know what the answer is. And they both say the same thing. They say, the reason why that the first Brysa says that the first Shemona Esrei didn't work was not because, oh, you missed the Chorantano, it's a, it's a fatal error. No, not, not the, it's not a fatal error. Like we learned in the second price, it's not a fatal error. In this particular instance, that's this the case. In this case, that's where it was a mistake. And that's why it didn't work. And I'll explain to you why. Because of what Ellie said. Because in this case, remember, he missed Mincha on Shabbos. He's making it up on Motsai Shabbos by davening two Shemona Esrei, right? When he missed, when he did not say Atal Charantano in the first Shemona Esrei, and he did say it in the second, says the Rashba, says the Rosh, you know why he did that? I'll tell you why he did that. He did that because 
he had a skewed understanding of what the makeups, how to make up uh, Miss uh, Shemana Esrei. He was trying to make up Bimcha, right? He thought that the first Shemona Esrei was the makeup, and the second Shemona Esrei was the one at hand. Ah, so therefore, he didn't say Atachan and Tanu in the first one, because that was what he thought to be the makeup Shemona Esrei. And the second one, that was where he said Atachan and Tanu. Says the Rashba, says the Rosh, that's his mistake. It wasn't so much because he missed Atta Chanantanu. Atta Chanantanu is not in and of itself a fatal error. But when you do this, that's a fatal error. When you make up the wrong way, that's the fatal error. When he is making up the Mincha, you refer, the order is you dive in the one that's, in, uh, that's at hand now first. Then you make up the other one. This fellow, by not saying Yatachan and in the first one, and yes, saying it in the second one, that was a window into his head that he was, he had it backwards. That he thought that the makeup was the first one, and the second Shemona Esrei was the one in hand. That was his mistake. And therefore, says the Rashba, says the Rosh, both of them say the exact same thing. Right? They were machavin to each other, even though they lived about... 800 miles apart, right? They were chavin to each other exactly. They cannot say the exact same word for word almost, right? They said, that was his mistake. And that's why both prices are correct. When you miss Atachan Antano on a regular Shemona Esrei, Motzei Shabbos, you do not have to repeat it because you can just go to make your formal Havdalah on a cup of wine at home. And it's no big deal. But if you miss it here, in this case, in the case of the previous brysa, brysa number one, then you inverted the order in which that the makeup was supposed to be done, and that is a fatal error. Chazal said you can make it up, but it has to be the second. First, you have to dive in the one at hand, and then make up. And then he messed it up. Good? Got it? So that's what you were, just, that's what you were saying, right? <laughs> I'm sure that Ellie got the whole thing. Does that make all of those brachas, those brachas, uh, brachas Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, yeah, oops. Right, yes, does that make it a brachal atala? Yes, the answer is yes, oops. Yes, those are all brachal atalas, unfortunately. Not that they were intentionally done like that, of course, but okay. Practical halacha, if you miss chakras and you do two minchas, do you say ashray both times? You do Two okay, okay. You, the question was, can, can I hold that question? Okay, okay, now. I just want to throw in one more thing. You ready for this? Comes later, Achronim. This one you'll probably be familiar with. Achronim are the more, you know, after the later commentaries. Later commentaries, later Achronim. Uh, you know, exactly where you make that demarcation between the Rishonim and the Achronim is somewhat questionable. Most people would make it after 1492, right? After 1492, the Spanish Inquisition and the expulsion from Spain, and that really, like, that, that, that marked a new, new step in history. And from that point on, it was the Achronim. And, you know, we, I, technically we're all achronim now. <laughs> Achroni achronim, right? Okay, so um, the later achronim pick up on this whole discussion here, on the rush, the rush, but the, the, the Mishnah Brura. I'm sure you've, you've heard of him, right? The Mishnah Brura, the great, the great halachic work of the Chavetz Chaim. So now we're only talking about 150 years ago. Not even, right? Chavetz uh, Chaim wrote the finished the Mishnah Brura. I think it was eighteen ninety something or other, right? So the Chavetz Chaim, the Mishnah Brura, brings this whole discussion, quotes our Gemara, as you know the whole thing, right? And he says, "Aha!" In Shulchan Arach. 
he's a the Mishnah Buddha is a commentator on the Shulchan Aruch. In Shulchan Aruch, it quotes both prices. It quotes that if you miss uh, on a regular Motzei Shabbos, you do not have to repeat Shemun Esrei because you can say it because of, right? Because of Alakos, right? You can say it later on, more formally, right? But in the laws of making up prayer, he says, if you miss Mincha on Shabbos, you make it up by davening two Motzei Shabbos, two Shemun Esrei's Motzei Shabbos, right? Says the Shulchan Aruch, exactly what the first Brisa says. Says the Shulchan Aruch, you're supposed to make Havdalah in the first, sh- first one, and you don't make Havdalah in the second one. That's the way you're supposed to do it. If you blew it and you said Havdalah in, in the second one and not the first one, you blew it and you have to repeat it. So he... he Right? And if you look at the commentaries, you'll see, ah, oh, because he says, that's what the Rosh said, that's what the Rashba said, that these two prices are not contradictory, even though the Yomura ended up with the Kasha, but they're really not contradictory, right? Because of what the Rashba said, because the Rosh said, right? And the Shulchan Aruch Paskins exactly that way, right? Good? Says the Mishnah Brura. Ah, okay. But that's only true if you intentionally missed your Atachonantanu in the first Shemon Esrei. Because if you intentionally missed the, fir- the Atachonantanu in the first one, and you decided, no, this is the makeup Shemon Esrei, and therefore I'm going to skip it, then you blew it. And then you have to do a third one. Right? Because, right, that's what the Rashba said. That was a window into his head that he thought that the first Monasri was the makeup, which was wrong. Right? Says the Mishnah Brura ever practically. Says, yeah, but a lot of us just simply miss Atochanantanu because we just miss it. Because we just, just sort of like run through Shmon a little bit mindlessly, unfortunately, right? And we just missed Atochan Antanu because we missed Atochan Antanu. <laughs> no intentions, no big thoughts. We just blew it, right? We just missed it, right? Really, we would have said Atochan Antanu the first one, but we forgot. So says the Mishnah Brura, in that case... Apply Bryson number two. In that case, being as you unintentionally missed it, so now it's not a fatal error. So now that was your Marif, right? Then, in fact, being as you're still in Shul and you haven't davened, you haven't said Atachanantanu yet, so you should say it in the second Shuras, right? But that is not wrong. Because since the first time you missed it, you, it wasn't intentionally missed because you thought it was a makeup. No. You, you, uh, you just missed it. You were just mindless, right? Ah, so in which case, your first Shemun Esrei did work. So now, says the Mishnah Buru, if your first Shemun Esrei did work, but you haven't said out the Hanatana yet. So anyway, you have to, if you're making up, you have to dive in another one. So you might as well say it in the second one. So it comes out. <laughs> it comes out that exactly what the Brisa says that is a fatal error and it's no good, says the Mishnah Brura, yeah, but that's only if you did it intentionally. But if you did it unintentionally, so then that's in fact what you should do. Right? How do you get that? Right? Right? How do you, how you like them apples? So the, the <laughs> so the, the, you see the, the the whole the whole thing is that that's why the re, that's why the the post can all say don't paskin based on a gemara, right? Don't paskin based on a gemara. It says if you just read the gemara, maybe with Rashi, don't paskin yet, because until you've gone through what the rishonim have to tell you you're really not sure what the conclusion is. You thought you knew what the conclusion was, 
Ha! You weren't, uh, <laughs> you didn't know what the conclusion was, right? Because I just showed you that there's a whole layer of discussion past where the Gemara finishes, right? There's a whole, there's a Rajba, the Rabbi Go, and Rajba, Rosh, Shulchan Aruch, Mishnabur, there's a whole, there's a whole to do. When they put oh. the little letters in the Gemara for the Halacha, is that, that's the Halacha based on... That's just, yeah, that, that, that is, the, when you put the little letters in the Gemara, that is just a, that's a footnote. That's just, there's a, the, one of the commentaries, Ein Mitzvah, Ne'er Mitzvah, he, uh, he just simply, um, yeah, I don't tell you, he, he, he just makes a, um, what's the right word? It's a footnote, just shows you, huh? A reference, right. He, ref, he makes a reference, this is where you'll find this in the Rambam and in Shulchan Aruch. Right, if you want to look at the halacha more in depth. He'll show you where it comes from, from the, from the Gemara. Right, but you got to look, because uh, if, you don't, if you don't look, you'll, uh, you won't know what the conclusion is. Sometimes the conclusion may, may surprise you, as in this case, the Gemara came out one way, and you would have thought that that was the conclusion, but in fact, the halacha is, uh, is as we just finished going through this whole thing, right? Got it? Is it clear? Okay, Why so... Why does it make sense to, uh, that you should say the, rep the makeup as the first one at hand? Why doesn't it make sense that you should say the first one should be the makeup of the previous one? Okay. The second one should be... So that's part of the discussion. So Rabbi Roll just asked, why is it in fact that the first one is always the one at hand and not the makeup? Why is that? And it's even a fatal error to do it the other way around. That's what we just finished saying. That's a fatal error. So this is part of the discussion. This, uh, the Rashba himself says... The Gemara was afraid to say this because the Gemara wasn't sure that that was such a fatal error. But it is. It is a fatal error. And the reason seems to be as follows. And we have a rule that says, you always, a mitzvah mm-hmm. don't delay a mitzvah. If you have a mitzvah that's going to have to do now, that's the mitzvah you do first. A mitzvah that, that has time, you put that later. So even though Mariv has time, but you anyway miss the time for Mincha. You're anyway having to make up. Right? So the halacha is, and that's the way that the Chazal established the rule of make up prayer. The Chazal established you always make up after. The second Shemon Esri is the make up. Because the rule of thumb is always you daven what you need to daven now first. Makeups come later, right? That's that. That's not you do what you what you have at hand right now, right now first. So much so that the Rashba is saying that that's a fatal error if you if you do it the other way around. Is there hashkafa? What's the hashkafa of that? I suppose because that you have to do what you have to do now, right? Live in the moment. Live in the moment right here, right now. These are your obligations now. If you have to, if you messed up and you forgot it, you know, Shmon uh, before, and you have to make it up, that you do second. That's a secondary, not primary. That's, that seems to be the, uh, the system based on this rush and the, on the Rashba. Is it clear? Got it? So now you got a little taste of, uh, of Rishonim and, uh, and uh, you know, it gets fun when you. Uh, it's it, 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 it's fun when you get into the melee in the in the Rishonim. It gets it gets fun to see. To see. It's really this one. This one was it was was somewhat easy. It, it gets really fun when um, when they start arguing with each other. Then it's really fun because then uh, you know. So you know, some one of the Rishonim says 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 this, and then some of the, the then a later Rishon says what. That's ridiculous. Yeah, this proof, this Gemara proves him wrong, and this proves him wrong, wrong right? Uh, that's crazy. And then somebody else says, "What? You were wrong. You don't know what you're talking about." Because da, da, da. <laughs> and, and, and everybody jumps into the act and gets a, into a brawl. Oh, it's it's it's, it's great fun. Yeah, you know, just you know, just uh, ah, 
you know, trying to figure out all the things and what's go driving all the machlaiks in, and that's 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 where it really gets fun. <laughs> all right, okay. Shkayach to everybody.